Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to pass data from one function to another function using arguments. To get us started, let me just show you this really simple demo that I've put together. So let me launch this application here. And you can see here, this is called Move the Shields. And the shield is down here in the center of the stage. And I've got some text here that kind of counts how many times I've moved the shield. You move the shield zero times. And then importantly, I have this drop down that allows me to choose different positions for the shield. So if I click the second item here, 100 by 100, boom, the shield moves there. If I select the next item, boom, it moves there, so on and so forth. And the whole time, of course, it's keeping track of how many times that I have moved the shield. So the point of this activity is to pass this information to one function that gets used over and over again to move the shield to a different X and Y location or position. So let's learn how to do that by passing some data. So let me close this. I'm going to close, quit this project, and I'm going to come to the starter code. And you'll see here, if I run the starter code, what I have here, everything's all set up, but I have my drop down or option button it doesn't have any options in it. And so nothing's wired up and, and nothing's working. So I already have my script file set up. So let's go ahead and look at the code that's that comes with the starter package. And in my ready function, all that does is call add shield and add shield creates an instance of the shield scene, positions it in the center of body, and then adds it as a child of body. So really simple. But when my program starts, what I want to start out by doing is actually populating this location button over here. I want to give it some values. So in my code, in the ready function, I am going to go into my location button and I am going to add an item to that. And I'm going to, the very first item is going to be home. And then what I can do is copy and paste this. One, two, three, we'll do it four times. And in the second one, I'm just kind of arbitrarily putting in some values here, 100 by 100. And the next one we'll do 300 by 200. I'm just making up some values here, 500 by 300. And then for the very last one, let's put in 700 by 400. Great. Now, if I save this and run my code, I should see just by adding those items, I have communicated with this option button and I've actually put in some values. Of course, when I select these values, nothing happens. That's because we've learned in Godot that by default, buttons don't do anything. We have to wire them up. And we do that with signals and functions. And so I'm gonna close this. And what I wanna do is actually add a signal to location button. So with location button selected, I'm gonna come over to my signals. For option button, I am going to choose item selected. So I'm gonna double click that and it's gonna ask me where do I want to write that method and I wanna do it in main and I'm going to click connect. And so it's put in some placeholder code here for me. Now what I want to do is I want, I need to put in a little bit of logic to determine where the user wants to move the shield depending on which item in the option button they selected. So I'm gonna get rid of the pass here and I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call this button value and I'm going to make that equal to the actual text inside the location button and so I'm going to say header location button text and now just for fun I could print this out button value and I should see when I select a button that should get traced out for me so let's see if I click this the text down here is 100, 100. So that we know it's working. Good. Now, another thing that I need to take into account for is I'm, I know that I want to move the shield. 
And in order to reposition an item, we need an X value and a Y value. So I'm going to go ahead and create two VARs, two variables. And this first one, I'm just going to call X value and I'll set it to zero. And I'm going to call this second one the Y value. I could have called those anythings. I'm just making up some easy names. And now what I want to do here is say if button value equals equals, I need to do a test. If it's equal to home, I need to treat it differently than the other items. And I'll also put in an else statement where I do something else. So if the button value is home, I am going to make the value of X value equal to the middle of the stage, 512, and I'm going to make Y value equal to the midi middle of body, which is 250. Now, that'll take care of the home situation. For all of the other items, I want to do something else. I want to treat these two numbers as the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. So I'm going to have to get a, what we call a substring or a part of the string. So how do we do that? Well, we can say X value is going to equal button value. And specifically, I want to get a substring. And when I type in substring parentheses, notice that it's telling me I need to give it a from integer and a length integer. In other words, I need to tell Godot where to start counting for the substring and how long I want the substring to be. And so for the X value, I only want these three digits, the 100 or the 300. So I'm going to tell it to get the substring at zero. I want the length of that substring to be three characters. In other words, 100. And now, importantly, this is going to be a string because up here in my, notice these are between quotes up here in the option button. So I need to convert this to an integer. So I am just simply going to wrap this in int parenthesis parenthesis. And that will take that value and turn it from a string into an integer. That's called casting in programming language. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the Y value. Let me just copy and paste this. But instead of going from zero to three, I'm going to start at the fifth character. And I'm also going to get three characters length. And now once I have this data, what I want to do is pass these values to a function designed to move the shield. So let me go ahead and create that function. So I'm going to say func and I'm just going to call it literally underscore move shield. Now importantly, I want to pass this function some data. So I'm going to actually pass it two pieces of information. I'm going to pass it the new X position. Now I could have called that anything, but I'm just using very simple descriptive variable names so that we understand what we're doing. So I have the move shield function is always going to expect two variables, an X position and a Y position. And then what I can do is say, okay, if I'm going to move the shield, the first thing I need to do is get a pointer or a variable that points to the shield. And so I'll call this shield and I will set that to body dot get child. And I know there's only one child. There's only one shield. So I'm just going to say get child at position zero. And then what I want to do is I'm going to set the, the position dot X of shield to be the value that gets passed to this function, to the new X position. And then of course, I want to do the same thing to the Y position, but I want to go to the new Y position. Now, of course, I need to come back up to this function outside of my if else, and I need to actually manually call move shield. And so I want to move shield and notice in my code hinting here, it's telling me that the move shield function is expecting two variables new X position and new Y position. And so I'm going to say here, I'm going to pass it X underscore value and Y underscore value. So let's see if this works. It should work. Let me pause this and run it again. And if I click 100, 100, boom, our shield moves. Boom, 
our shield moves and I can bring it back home as well. Excellent. Now, one thing that's not working is keeping track of the number of times that I have moved the shield. And so to do that, what I'm going to need is a global variable. And a global variable is a variable that's usually declared up at the top of your code, something like number of moves, and it's going to start out at zero. And what makes it global is that any of these functions can actually use this variable. Otherwise, if you declare a variable in a function, let's take a look at this, the add shield s, that this variable s is only available to this function. And so I'm going to copy the number of moves. And any time that I actually move the shield, I'm going to say number of moves is going to be number of moves plus one. I want it to add one to that value. And then, of course, I need another function that's actually going to update our label. If you remember, if I come back over here, I have a label here. You move the shield x times. And so I need to write the code in order for that label to be updated. And so I'm going to create a function. It's just going to say update label. Very simple. And I need to do just a little bit of logic here. So I'm going to put in an if statement and I'm going to say if number of moves equals equals one, I need to use different grammar, else I'm going to do something else. And what I want to do is communicate with that label, which I know is a child of header. And I'm going to set the text to be equal to, you moved the shield. Now here's where I use that global variable. I'm going to say number of moves. And let me just correct the typos here and put a period. Now, importantly, number of moves is an integer. So I have to tell Godot, treat this integer like it's a string. So I'm just going to wrap it in string parenthesis parenthesis. And then down here, whoops, this should be one and this should be excellent. Let's run our code and we can see everything's working. However, this isn't being called. So I need to call my update label function after I move the shield. So I'm going to manually call update label and that should increment now each time I move the shield. I move the shield once, I move the shield one time. You move the shield two times. And there you go, folks. This is how we can pass data from one function to another. And this also talks about using a global variable.